Hi, my name is Miss Deborah, and I am a museum educator from the Newark Museum of Art. I would like to welcome you to Snapshot of Native Artists of North America. We will be connecting your students to the Newark Museum of Art via a remote museum learning experience. Students will observe and discuss three pieces from the museum's Native Artists of North America gallery. Artistic excellence is a value of great importance within Native American communities. And these works are made by artists from different nations across the continent, each with their own artistic traditions. Artistic traditions are dynamic, meaning that over time, what objects are made of or what they look like change a little bit. Each geographic area has a distinct climate, landscape, plants, and wildlife. The natural resources from these regions have in turn shaped the development of native art traditions. Our focus will be on North Pacific Coast and Southwest artists. Observation and discussion are powerful tools that enable students to develop the skills to acquire aesthetic and language literacy. These skills aid students when sharing their interpretations of artwork to understand the world around them and to gain confidence in their own ideas while engaging in a thoughtful, respectful discussion with their peers. Before discussing each work of art, take a minute or two to slowly and quietly observe the artwork. Tell students that each piece is the artist's perspective of what they saw and felt. Ask the students to think about how the work reflects a specific time and place and how the artist used their own experiences to create that piece and how in turn their own experiences perspectives and views influence how they perceive the piece. Then ask your students to share their observations. Pause the presentation here for a few minutes to allow students to quietly study the work of art. Encourage them to internally gather a few thoughts about the piece that they would like to share in the discussion. Let's discuss the artwork. What do you notice about this piece? What details do you find interesting? Why? Let's discuss how the artwork relates to you. Do you own anything like this? What do you use it for? Along the coast of British Columbia, Canada, and southeastern Alaska, the climate is milder than the Arctic and the environment is rich with dense forests of huge cedar trees and many different plants by the rivers. There are lots of fish in the ocean and rivers and shellfish are close to the shore. These resources define this region and influence the materials the North Pacific Coast artists use. This is a work by an unidentified Alaskan Tlingit artist from the late 1700s to early 1800s. 
It is carved from cedar and the design is highlighted with blue paint in ochre column shells. Cedar chests such as this were used to store beloved possessions and ceremonial regalia, such as robes, blankets, and masks that were kept to display of potlatches. A potlatch is a ceremonial feast to celebrate a marriage, birth, or rise to a place of social prominence. The outside of Klingit chest were carved with designs of animals and beings that symbolize clans. The front of the box represents the face of a creature distinguished by the two oval eyes outlined with light blue paint. Each has a smaller face within and the wide mouth delineated with shells. We will now be discussing our second artwork of the program. Please take a minute to quietly observe the work. Pause the presentation here for a few minutes and encourage students to internally gather a few thoughts about the piece that they would like to share in the discussion. Let's start the discussion. What do you notice about this piece? How is this piece different from the other piece? How is it the same? How do you relate to the piece? Do you think you could use this for something? What? If you had a choice between the pieces, which one would you choose? Why? Preston Singletary's Klingit storage chest dated 2015 is a contemporary piece in glass. Singletary is a Seattle, Washington artist descended from the Klingit. He studies ancient designs made in traditional materials such as cedar wood and recreates them in glass, a contemporary material. The figure on this glass chest is made in the same design style as the one we saw in the cedar wood chest. It represents an animal being. Beings like this represent an important story or a family's history. Although Klingit designs are complicated, the face and claws of the being are recognizable. Let's take the knowledge that we learned today about the glass and cedar Klingit storage chests and compare them. How have traditions and traditional art making techniques influenced native artists to create contemporary works of art? Do you have a family tradition? 
that you use today? How have you changed it to be modern? We will now be discussing our third artwork of the program. Please take a minute to quietly observe the work. Pause the presentation here for a few minutes and encourage students to internally gather a few thoughts about the piece that they would like to share in the discussion. Let's start the discussion. What do you notice about this piece? What details do you find interesting? Why? Do you think this was a decorative piece or used for a purpose? Do you have decorative dishes at home? What designs are on them? The Zia Pueblo is located in New Mexico, which is in the southwest region of the United States. This geographic area is abundant in clay. Pueblo women are skilled clay pottery artisans. The pottery jar we just discussed was created by a Zia Pueblo artist from the early 1900s. Painting on Pueblo pottery often includes images from plants and wildlife native to the Dia Pueblos region. This piece includes the image of a roadrunner, a bird with a long tail and a crest. The Zia admired the roadrunner's speed, endurance, and bravery. It can even kill a rattlesnake. Extension activity. If you would like to extend the lessons learning with a hands-on project, please proceed. The materials needed are clay or Play-Doh. A homemade recipe for Play-Doh is included in the program's outline. A spoon, fork, or popsicle stick, and non-toxic paint. That part is optional. Make a pot inspired by Pueblo coiled pottery techniques. Before clay was available for purchase, native artists often dug it up close to a source of water and carried it where they worked. Handling the clay with water softened it. The potters then rolled the clay into coils and wrapped them around and around 
until achieving the desired width and height. Then the surface was padded smooth. The smooth shape and even shape are measures of artistic skill. The finest artists were known for making pots with strong but thin walls. Pots were needed to carry water and other necessities, so the lighter the better. To decorate their pots, artists could thin the extra clay into a paint-like mixture and added color with minerals and plants. Students will learn how to make a pot inspired by the techniques of the indigenous peoples of the Southwest, but their supplies will be what is available to them, not found in nature, and their design should reflect their experiences and perspectives. Students may use clay, Play-Doh, or make their own Play-Doh with the recipe included in the lesson outline. Students may gently carve designs into the sides of their pot, and after it is dry, they may paint their pot. Gather your supplies. Pause at each pot making slide to allow students time to complete each step. Divide the clay or Play-Doh in half and roll each piece in the palms of your hands to form two balls approximately two and a half inches in diameter or two and a half inches across. If it helps, you can picture yourself making a meatball. Roll each of the balls in between your hands to form two separate coils. You may also roll the coils on a flat surface. They should look like two snakes without a head and be approximately the same length. Lay one of the coils on the table and fold one end in. Then wrap the coil around and around until you form a circle. This will be the base. You can also flatten out the top of the coil so it's kind of flat like the inside of a pot. Take the second coil and place an end on top of the base's outer coil. Then wrap it around and keep layering it on top of each level of coil to build up the sides of the pot. Once the sides of the pot are formed, smooth out the coils using a spoon or an ice pop stick. If your clay or Play-Doh has started to dry out, you may apply a small amount of water to the pot surface. Don't apply too much water because it thins the walls and weakens them. Now that the sides are smooth, it is time to add personal touches. Students may decorate their pot by lightly carving designs into the sides using items found at home, such as a fork, toothpick, or pencil. After allowing your pot to dry for at least 24 hours, you may use non-toxic paint to add even more personal touches. You have created your own pot inspired by traditional Pueblo artist techniques.
that your pod's designs reflect your experiences and perspectives. Congratulations on connecting the past and present with native artists of North America. Thank you. The Newark Museum of Art is a great resource for art and artifacts from the galleries of arts of ancient Mediterranean, global arts of Africa, global arts of Asia, native artists of North America, early America, Gilded Age, Harlem Renaissance, and contemporary American art. For more information on events like Art After Dark, Camp, Community Days, Educator Evenings, please see our website, newarkmuseumart.org. Follow us on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter at Newark Museum Art.